um, act as if I am a student and he is a teacher and I have just completed a um, couple of lessons, one about water properties and one about the water cycle, the incredible journey. And I have my Metamap here and I've started to build some um, of the relationships um, in the water cycle and I've thought about what the processes are. I'm trying to answer this question, how do the properties of water enable water to move through the Earth's system? Um, and so I, I've got my properties and I've got um, my water cycle starting to build. And I might say, okay, I, I don't know what to do now. Okay, so, um, so what, these are, the, the center circle is a big system that is your earth systems. Uh huh. And then water cycle processes on the left, and water properties on the right. And so the question is, how does how do those water properties that are on the right lead to you know movement through all those things in the middle? And um, so let's go over the water properties. And you know what is what is adhesion? Adhesion is water sticking to other stuff. So maybe you could write that. In there, you know, double click on adhesion and and you know colon water sticking to other stuff, just so we know what it is and further distinguish it. And then what's cohesion? Cohesion is water sticking to itself, water molecules sticking together. Okay. And um, we could do surface tension and capillary action, but that's probably good enough. Um, so what we want to know is what do those properties, how, what is the relationship between those properties and these other two systems that you have to the left of them? What do you think those relationships are? Well, water sticking together, is that like um, a lake or the ocean? Yes, yeah, so, so let's take what is the relationship between water sticking together or cohesion and uh, the lake or ocean? What do you think? So we know that those are related, right? Because to have yeah. a lake, what do you think a lake is? Is it is it just a bunch of water sticking together? Um, yes. Okay. So so you would need that. That definitely is a relationship. What's the relationship between them? What I write. Um, so put in some question marks. Okay. You don't, you don't really know what the relationship is, but you certainly could. Um, you could think about what is the relationship between cohesion and a lake. Well, all the molecules in a lake are sticking together, and yeah. on top of the lake, there's actually surface tension. So awesome. can I relate this to that, too? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you can change those question marks in there to what what you just you just discovered a new relationship that wasn't even part of the lesson. Now they stick together until um, oh actually I just noticed that I've got this relationship going from clouds to lake but it goes both ways right because clouds the water can go into the lake. Mm -hmm. And the lake can go to the clouds. What happens when the lake, when there's evaporation? What happens to cohesion then? That's a good question. So you can move lake a little bit to the right so that you can have a little space there for the relationship. And then, so what, say your question again. What, what, is your, what are you asking yourself? Well, so we've got evaporation and precipitation happening here, depending on which way you're going. Can I make two relationships and then make it separate? Yeah, just draw another relationship there, and it'll make almost what looks almost like a little feedback loop. Great. Okay, so then this then arrow, evaporation the arrow. is like going to that, so I have to change this to look like that. And then this one goes like that. Nope, goes the other way. And this one will be precipitation. Yes. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, so what happens to cohesion when evaporation happens? Good question. What do you think? Well, I know that um, oh, cohesion is happens because water molecules have polar bonds, right? We did that exercise where we all pretended to make polar bonds. So I better add that as a part of this. And yeah. so um, when the sun acts on the lake and makes it warm up, it breaks polar bonds. Oh. So I don't know if the sun is related to evaporation. I guess so. Um, I have to move it up a little bit. And this is the breaking of polar bonds. Okay. Um, That's great. Just identified that relationship. So, is there a place where that happens in the reverse, where the where the polar bond causes things uh, to go together? Well, I guess. I mean. Precipitation is not really, I mean, is it making polar bonding happen? Um, I don't think so. Water drops. So precipitation is, is a water drop falling out of the cloud. Uh-huh. So it seems like maybe... Oh, so working. there's something going on with clouds and polar bonding. Um, so when clouds uh, are formed, water molecules are having cohesion around dust particles. Yeah. So that's like a whole thing. Um, that's condensation. Maybe I should put it over here with condensation. Yeah. Um, so a part of condensation is polar bonding. Yeah. Again. And. Um, how can I show that water drops forming on polar bonding together around dust particles is making clouds? Yeah, so we, we don't have to put it all in, the, in one single map. You could go down to an empty space and sort of you're almost like zooming in on one little part. Okay. A little interaction, and just right. draw what you're what you're thinking. Okay. So you've got some dust particles, and you've got some water molecules. And there's a relationship between those two, right? Yeah. So these two things are. Polar bonding. <laughs> uh, no, that's adhesion, right? Adhesion, good. Because that's Something what is like adhesion? That. Okay. Water sticks to other stuff. I think yeah. I misspelled adhesion there. I've got some extra letters in there. Yeah. Adhesion is when water sticks to other stuff. And so this now is a in cloud. That water droplet, do you have more than one water molecule? Um, yes. And are they sticking together? Um, yes. So I gotta have another water molecule. And these two things are related by cohesion. Very nice. Okay. And can I make this whole thing a cloud? Yeah. So I remember. So yep. I take, do I draw a square around it? Uh, you can just grab it and sh press shift and grab, or you can draw a square, but I would just press shift and grab and then drag it over. Drag oh, the whole I thing. Got the oh, cloud you got one. I'm going to undo the cloud. Okay. Oh, I can't. Just click off. Yeah, there you go. 
and then drag it until you see the green. Yep. And yep. Drop it. There you cool. go. Okay. All right. So now I've got a good understanding of clouds and how that whole system works. Um, and what we were talking about is how precipitation works. It seems like the droplet is separating from the cloud, but it's also holding together, right? Oh, right. So precipitation also has um, cohesion happening in it. Yeah. Cool. Um, and all right. So another thing that we talked about um, in the water cycle lesson was groundwater. And mm -hmm. water um, gets into groundwater through percolation. I know that. So I can um, maybe just put percolation here. Um, I don't have it leaving the system at all. And I know from the incredible journey that it can go out um, either by being pumped out or I guess it could percolate back into the river. So that relationship goes away for both ways. That worked good. Um, then um, it could also go into plants, mm. and that so happens because of capillary action. So nice. we do a whole lesson about called thirsty plants, where we learn about capillary action. So I know a little bit about that. Um, yep. And capillary action is water molecules sticking together. So it also has some polar bonding happening. So you're um, starting to see that polar bonding is showing up in a lot of different places. Yeah. And is polar bonding a part of, is the bipolar nature of the water molecule, um, is that related in any way to adhesion? Well, is adhesion polar bonding as well? Um, what do you think? I think so. I don't know if I can know that for sure. Let's see, where do we have adhesion happening so far? Adhesion, well, capillary action can't happen in plants without water also sticking to the sides of the tubes, whatever we want to call those, the xylem yeah. as well. We can just call them tubes. So that's adhesion yeah. as well. And cohesion, there's both there. Um, and so I think that must mean that adhesion also includes polar bonding. Okay. So I'm going to put that over here as a confirmed idea. Okay. Um, oh, and, and here we've got plants going from the clouds. I know that that's evaporation again. Nice. Um, and that's that same thing as in the lake. It involves the sun. Can I relate to a relationship? Yeah. Okay. Yep. The sun over here, so we get it. Better. Nice. Um, and and that's transpiration, which is one of my prop. I guess that's where we should go next. I've got all these properties over here. <laughs> I put many of them in, or I mean, all these processes over here. Right. Um. So that's transpiration, actually, that evaporation right here. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Those two are the same. Nice. Um, so here's my meta map, and I think we could keep going, but this is probably a good demonstration of how um, 
thinking using my MetaMap and having a little coaching to think through some of these relationships um, makes it possible for us to um, have new ideas and solidify my understanding beyond what we did during the lesson. Right. And maybe what we can do is, is, is you know, because you hit on all that polar, the polar structure of the molecule, we can, we can really come back to our question. Oh, right. Which is that there's this relationship between, and we can build kind of a separate map down, down below. There's this relationship between the polar structure of the uh, water molecule that seems to be, based on what you're saying, it seems to be relating to the water properties. So just double click on the R there and you'll create a new relationship. And then that could be your water properties, right? Yep. Because that that's that polar structure of the water molecule is actually causing those properties to be properties. the way that, that they are. So we could make a causal relationship there by clicking and writing causes or leads to or something like that. Okay. And then the water properties, you can double click again and make a relationship, double click on the R. And those would lead to what? Um, evaporation and precipitation, all the processes. Yeah, all your water cycle processes. The job. And then those lead to, what would be the relationship between those? Um, those help water move to yeah. all the places in the Earth system. Exactly. And so the relationship there is, is sort of enabled, right? Enables water to move to their system. And so go back to your question. Um, what was the question? Pull it up again. How do the properties of water enable water to move through their system? Yeah. So that, does that does that simplification of all the more complex thinking that you did answer that question? I think so. So the polar structure of the water molecule causes all the water properties, which causes the water cycle properties, um, and that enables water to move through their system. Very nice. All right. That's pretty good thinking. Awesome. <laughs> Should we, that's it? I think that's it. Okay.